there exists a love far greater than we will ever understand. A love prophesied for ages. Good morning. We are so excited that you guys are joining us this morning on Facebook and YouTube, wherever you're watching us for this wonderful New City Easter Sunday. We are so excited that you've joined us and we're gonna do some worship this morning. So if you would stand or you can sit wherever you are, we just ask that you join us in worship this morning because we love Jesus and we wanna just worship him together. I'm gonna pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. Father, we thank you that this is the Sunday that you arose. Father, we just remember, Father, that you were dead and then you became alive. So Father, we remember, Father, your sacrifice and what you did for us. Father, that you didn't stay in the grave. And so we just wanna worship you, Jesus, because you rose again. We love you, Jesus. We just wanna worship you this morning together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome, and we sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Easter New City. My name is Alyssa and I'm the Next Gen Pastor. We are so excited that you're joining us today. If this is your first time tuning in, we'd love to get to know you more. Send us some information at info at newcitycr.org so we can get you plugged in with everything that's going on. Now we're going to turn to a time of greeting, but it's going to look a little different than what we've been doing lately. We are going to move before the message. So get up off the couch, out of bed, wherever you are, grab the whole family, and let's start by doing one big stretch. Now, two frog leaps. Three ninja kicks. Hiya! Now four jumping jacks. Last but not least, five bunny hops. Great job, everyone. We actually have more family fun activities that you can participate in together after this service in a video that we sent in your email. We wanna make sure that you're getting all of this information, so if you're not getting our emails through our group, please let us know so we can add you. Or follow us on social media for all further updates. We also wanna know what your prayer requests are in this time, and there's a couple different ways that you can share that information with us. You can send us an email at info at newcitycr.org, or on our church app, we have a prayer wall. It's a place where you can post what your prayer needs are, and someone else could see it and click commit to praying for that for you during this time. It's a super cool feature and I definitely would encourage you to check it out. Now I'm gonna to transition to our time of giving. Now in this season, it is so wonderful that we can trust God with all of our needs, including our finances. There's a couple different ways that you can give. You can go through our website, you can give through our church app, you can text it in, or you can mail it to our church. All those options are available on your screen. I'm gonna pray over our tithes and offerings and then we're going to show what I humbly believe is one of the cutest tellings of the Easter story ever. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just lift all these needs up to you, God. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your wonderful plan for each of our lives. Today, I lift Pastor Daniel and Pastor Rod up to you. Pray that you would just anoint them as they share the wonderful good news of your resurrection. We are so thankful for that empty tomb. We thank you and give you the glory for all these things in your name, amen. Yeah, I especially love the ending. Do you want to tell the story? Sure. It goes like this. Jerusalem was a hobbling place. The holiday was called Passover. Jesus came by donkey transport. Hosanna was the password. All branches were everywhere. People called him king. Days later, nothing was the same. From grand entrance to final meal. From the mat to the garden. For this 37 coins. Jesus was betrayed. And Jesus was arrested. <gasps> it was just awful. The high priest and the governor interrogated Jesus. The evidence wasn't too legit. And the whole thing was rigged. Even the crowd turned. And chanted, crucify him. Jesus was stripped. Jesus was whipped. Jesus was mocked. Jesus was tortured. The wool crown of thorns. Ouch! That hurt! They hung him on a cross. And it wasn't a pretty sight. Jesus cried, It is finished. And breathed his last. They laid him in a tomb. And they sealed it with a very big rock. 
The tomb was full. After the Sabbath, the women went to the tomb. Nothing had prepared them for the surprise that waited. The, the tomb was, was empty! empty. The angel said to the women, don't be afraid. He's not here. He is risen. Take it out yourself. Now go tell everyone this great news. It's still good news today. That tomb is still empty. And Jesus still lives. And that's the only hope for you and me. And this crazy world that we live in, it's not, not complicated, complicated really. really. We have the Savior. Jesus Messiah. He died for us. When I survey, he was for us. Up from the grave he arose. He lives for us. Because he lives. So we worship him. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt. Forgive it and redeemed. This is amazing grace. And that's what Easter is all about. Go tell everyone this great news. That too is so empty. Christ is Yeah, I love that video. Those kids are right on in that the tomb is empty and he is risen. Hey, just want to say happy Easter to everybody that's watching, to our New City family and wherever you're watching from. Again, happy Easter. I hope that uh, you enjoy some family time today and maybe you have some, uh, some Easter traditions. I know that when our kids were young, we used to do a a flashlight Easter egg hunt at nighttime. And, and these were the eggs they loved to find, um, the ones with the money in them. And so if you have an Easter egg hunt today and you're a kid, hopefully you get some ones, uh, some ones or maybe more than ones, some fives or whatever, ones with money in them. Even if you're an adult, maybe you get in on the fun and, and find some eggs with money in them. Um, listen, Easter is all about a rescue, our rescue from sin. And today, people all over the world are celebrating this amazing, unbelievable story of our rescue from sin. And even though we're not together in person, we get to celebrate here online. And so let me share with you a verse to begin with today out of Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. For he himself rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son that he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I don't know if you all believe that or not, but that is so powerful that we've been rescued. The word rescue actually means the act of saving from danger or distress. How many of you ever have been involved in rescuing somebody or maybe have seen someone rescued? I know that this last winter, my family and I watched this movie called Breakthrough. It's a story of a young man back in 2015 that it was on, on the lake, on the ice of this lake uh, called Lake St. Louis, and he fell through, and, and he actually died, and they brought him back to life. When I think of the first responders that went out on his behalf, and they risked their lives. They went out on that thin ice, and they could have fallen through themselves, and you know, that's, that's what this look is. That's greater love, and, and they risked their lives, and thinking of great, uh, or thinking of first responders today, I just want to Give a shout out to all of our first responders right now. Doctors and nurses and EMTs and, and CDC people and uh, firefighters and police officers and people delivering food. And you're all heroes. And, and we can't be more thankful and grateful for all of you. We just want to say thank you again and, and that we're praying for you. Jesus puts his great rescue of us from sin in the context of greater love. And he shares this verse in John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. So today, Pastor Rod and I are going to share some points with you um, about the resurrection of Jesus and how it shows us this greater love. So here's the first point. The resurrection is the power of greater love. Have you ever been held by someone so tight that you felt helpless? Maybe against your will? Or maybe it was a, a good hug, a tight hug that you enjoyed, but 
nonetheless, you felt helpless. Well, sin is like this, is that it grips you so tightly that you become helpless. You are powerless against it. Doesn't matter how smart you are or how tough you are, all human beings are powerless against sin. And the Bible tells us in this verse in Colossians chapter 1 that Christ came with a greater power to rescue us from this dominion or power of sin. Again, for he has rescued us from the dominion or power of sin. Colossians 1, 13a. The power of darkness operates through hatred. That's how Satan operates his kingdom, through hatred. But the power of the kingdom of God operates some, by something greater, and that's greater love. You know, when my brother and I were younger, pre-teens, we had a little Yamaha 80 motorcycle. And I'll never forget the day when we found out some neighbors not far away had, had one as well, but theirs was faster and theirs was more powerful. And it, and it bothered us. It frustrated us. So we started messing with the motor on ours and, and started uh, figuring out if we could make ours faster and more powerful. And then one day we did, and, and we raced them, and we beat them. And I'll never forget the look on their faces when, when we had beaten them and they were defeated. What a feeling, um, the look that they, that they were defeated and our feeling that we had won, that our power was greater. The power of God's great love through Jesus is like that. It defeated the power of the enemy. And his greater love is more powerful than the power of hatred. Love is greater than hatred. And the Bible tells us that while we were still sinners and had hatred in our hearts toward God, that Jesus laid down his life so that we could all become his friends. Again, he rose from the dead and it showed us this unbelievable power of Christ's great love. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down his life for his friends. The resurrection is the power of greater love. And then secondly, the resurrection is the proof of greater love. Uh, you know, one of my daughters, Madigan, uh, one of my daughters, her name is Madigan, and she's a, a science teacher for sixth graders and you know, science is all about proof. And there are many proofs of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And one is called the pearl of great price. There's a parable in Matthew chapter 13 that talks about this man that sold everything to obtain one pearl of great price. And there are these words recorded in, in 1 Corinthians 15 that Paul shares that theologians believe today are like that. They are like such powerful words that, that we would that we would put aside everything else as followers of Jesus and hold on to these words. And it was believed that the early Christians knew these words. They were like a secret password or code that they shared one with another. They were powerful, treasured words. And Paul refers to them in, in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, For I delivered to you at first importance what I also received. And here are the words. That Christ died for our sins in accordance to the Scriptures that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, who was Peter, and the twelve, that he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep or died. And then he appeared to James, then all the apostles. You know, they believe that these words recorded were uh, recorded only 10 years after Jesus had died or had it resurrected from the, the grave. Then Jesus appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus and he saw for himself that death, not even death itself, could hold down Jesus. Cephas, James, and all the apostles, Paul himself, gave their lives because of these words of proof. And then Paul later recorded in 2 Corinthians 5, He died for all so that they who live might not live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. This is not just for those then. This is for us today. Those of us that believe in Jesus, we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for the run, for the one, excuse me, who rose on our behalf. Jesus came and proved his love for us, that he came, he died, and he rose again so that we could have new life. So the resurrection is the power of greater love, and the resurrection is the proof of greater love. Pastor Rod shares some more with them. Good morning, New City Church. 
I'm excited about Easter Sunday. I hope you're excited. I hope you are so excited about Jesus getting up out of the grave, this being Resurrection Sunday. You know, you should take some time right now on the comment section and uh, send out a smiley face, uh, put up a thumbs up emoji, uh, say amen, because Jesus lives today. And that should really drive a lot of excitement. You know, I really appreciate uh, what Pastor Daniel just shared about the power and the proof of Jesus's love, of that greater love that he showed, uh, rescuing us from the power of sin and, and of, of the darkness. Uh, so we're excited about uh, that love that Jesus has for us. And so today I wanna continue to talk about that great love and, and how Jesus uh, sacrificed his life, how he uh, was raised from the dead to demonstrate that great love. And I'd like to talk a little bit about a, t a couple of times that Jesus was talking to his disciples. Um, you know, every one of us, we've got friends. And so uh, why don't you think for a minute about your friends? Think about maybe one friend in particular. You know, whether you're uh, an adult or whether you're a kid, we all have friends. You know, I want to take you back to a time that I, uh, a friend that I had in the second grade. I remember in the second grade, I had this friend, his name was Scott. Uh, we did all kind of things together. We, at recess, we would play together. At lunch, we would sit together. We would have a lot of fun together. Uh, but, you know, in the middle of the school year, he moved away. And that was pretty hard, I tell you. It was uh, tough having my best friend move away. Uh, and, you know, I want to draw you into a story here uh, that Jesus was talking to his disciples, his friends. And he was talking about the fact that he was going to have to go away. Uh, so let's turn uh, here in our Bibles to John 14, uh, starting at verse 1. It says, and Jesus was say, speaking this to his disciples. He said, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You know, did you catch a promise that was made in this scripture? Jesus promised that he would come again. He had to go away, but he promised that he would come again and that he would take them to where he was going. You know, this promise that Jesus made is for all of us. You know, Jesus being resurrected from the grave says that he is he can keep this promise. He can even though he had to go away, that he's going to come back. And that gives us hope that gives all of us hope. Uh, hope is something that we have to look forward to. And so my point here is that the resurrection is the promise of greater love. Jesus, he promised that he would come back, demonstrating how much he loved his disciples, that he wouldn't leave them, he wouldn't forsake them. He had come back and he'd get them. You know, we're all looking forward to, you know, we've been away from our friends during this time uh, with the virus, and I know that we're all looking forward to coming back and, and being with friends and family uh, when all this is over. Let me take you to another promise that Jesus made to his, his friends and his disciples. In John 14, verse 16, it says, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another a helper, that he may abide with you forever. So Jesus, he says, even though I'm going away, I promise that I'll talk to the Father and he's going to send you a helper. Some versions may uh, talk about a comforter. So you don't have to be worried during even this time because we have a great comforter, the Holy Spirit, who lives in us. And you know, you know I, I want you to know, even though my second grade friend, he moved away, by sixth grade, he came back. You know, now we didn't pick up exactly where we left off, but we still became tight again uh, because he came back. You know, I love this fact that Jesus, he got up out of the grave. He, he uh, lived again, and that made this promise so true that he demonstrated this great love that he had for his disciples. Now, remember that there is nothing like the promise of love. 
He says it in John 15, 13, that I know Pastor Daniel has shared this scripture with you. Greater love has no man than this, than one lay down his life for his friends. Now remember that friend that I asked you to think about. That friend is a person. Now I know some of us and some of you kids, you may have, your, your friends may be imaginary friends. I, I remember uh, back in my life where I had these imaginary friends, but I'm talking about these friends who are real people. I want to remind us that Jesus, he is a person. He is the son of God. John 3.16, a great scripture that a lot of us have it memorized. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Jesus is a person. He is the son of God. Sometimes we forget that he's a real per- that Jesus is a real person. He walked on earth. He ate food. He had friends. And so my next point is that the resurrection is the person of greater love. The person of greater love. It's through the person of Jesus that we have redemption. It is through his death, burial, and resurrection that we have forgiveness of sin. We cannot obtain forgiveness any other way than through this person, Jesus. This person, he laid down his life. Greater love has no man than this, than one lay down his life for his friends. The word greater here is mega. Meaning it's as big as it gets, like mega hit or mega star or, you know, mega city. Laying down your life for someone else is as big as love can get. It doesn't get any mega, any bigger, any greater than this. I want to take a minute to talk about this person, Jesus. Jesus. Because if you don't know Jesus, the person Jesus, I want to introduce you to him. See, uh, Jesus, he is the savior of the world. Jesus, he is the son of God. He lived a perfect sin-free life. He was beaten, he shed his blood, and he died on the cross. He was raised from the dead And now he sits on the throne with his father, God. If today you want to give your life to him, I pray that you do that. Give your life to Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. There is no greater love than one lay down his life for his friends. We thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life, for being that great sacrifice. And so, Father, we pray, God, that we would always celebrate Jesus, the person Jesus, who showed the greatest love of all. So be with us, God. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Now, I'd love for you as a, us as a family to come together and celebrate communion. You know, we had asked you uh, last week to get your elements together so that we could do this together. And I want to, as we set this communion up, so hopefully you've got your elements in front of you. Um, let me share a scripture here that comes out of Luke 22, starting at verse 14. And this again was a time that Jesus was sitting down with his friends, his disciples. So I'm gonna start reading here at verse 14 of Luke 22. And it says, when the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, 
I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the, the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so as we partake of this communion, especially on today, we're reminded of Jesus' sacrifice, of him giving his life, of his body being beaten and bruised, of the blood coming streaming down from his body and that blood covering every one of our sins. And so we're going to partake of this bread and, and this cup. And so let me pray over it, and then we can take it together. So, Father, thank you again for Jesus and his sacrifice. We thank you, God, that he demonstrated your love in such a great way. And, Father, that it was through his sacrifice that we can now be a part of your family. And so, God, I pray that you would bless this bread and bless this cup in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why don't you eat and drink together? Now, as we conclude today, we know that Easter is such an awesome time for family, and we want you parents to really engage with your kids and so there's going to be a video that's going to play here. And I know that we've sent you some materials of games and thing, ways that you can engage your kids. And so this video is going to set it up, this Easter jam. So you guys have fun and continue to celebrate the awesomeness of Easter today. and happy Easter. I'm Trey and I am so pumped for what's about to happen. Now before we get started, there's only one thing you need to know. Easter Jam is for everybody in your family. So if you're a teenager, this is for you. College students, you too. And if you're a younger kid, get ready. We're about to have some serious fun and we need you to lead the way. Adults, buckle up. This is Easter like you've never done it before. No matter who you are, we want you to know that Easter Jam is for you. The only way to not have fun is to not participate. So look around, is anybody missing? If so, hit that pause button and go get them now. We're getting started in three, two, one. Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Okay, hear me out. There are only two kinds of people in the world. People who love these things, and people like me. I just don't get it. How do you eat something that is this cute and grainy? Now let's see how your family feels. Show me a thumbs up if you love to eat these things, and a thumbs down if you don't. Okay, okay. There are a lot of different opinions out there. But no matter how you feel about eating peeps, you're gonna love this game. Your family is going to face off 
in the greatest peeps jousting competition of all time. I'm gonna explain how it works and then I'll tell you when to start. First, divide the room into two teams. Next, take two peeps and assign them to a team. Now, if you don't have any peeps, no worries at all. Big marshmallows like this one will work just as well. Now, team A gets peep A, team B gets peep B. You can come up with cooler names like Lord Sugarcoat or Sir Sprinkles, you get the idea. You can also use a marker or a Sharpie to decorate your peeps to give them some personality. Maybe you can draw a mustache on your peep or give them some mean eyebrows or a fancy outfit. Just let your creative juices flow. Next, you need to prepare your peeps for battle. Take a toothpick and stick it into the front of each peep, just like that. Now you can think of the toothpick as a jouster, a lightsaber, or a sword. It just depends on how serious your family is about the competition. Make sure the toothpick is facing forward and toward the other peep. Now you're gonna place the two combatants on a microwave plate. No social distancing is necessary. You want the peeps to be as close together and facing one another. And finally, time for the big event. Gather around and put the plate in the microwave, setting the timer to 45 seconds. You won't let it run that long. In fact, don't let it run that long. Then press start. Watch at a safe distance until the peeps drop their toothpick sabers and one touches the other. The toothpick that touches the other peep first, that peep wins. Now, as soon as this happens, you're gonna wanna stop the microwave. Trust me on this one. Stop the microwave. Okay, it's time to settle this thing. And don't forget to snap a pic of that photo finish. It's go time. Press pause now, and I'll wait here. How did it go? Who won? I want pictures. You can post them with the hashtag EasterJam2020. Now, <laughs> I have to admit, this was a lot more fun than I thought. And also, this happened. Jeez. All right, you ready for another game? For this one, you need a laundry basket and socks. Lots of socks. Clean or dirty, doesn't matter. As long as they have a match. Now, if you need to, go grab those things now. Press pause. I'm gonna go wash my hands and then I'll explain the rest. Got your basket and socks? Great. Now, choose two people to play. You'll also need two people to be scorekeepers. And to get started, dump all the socks on one side of the room. Don't worry, those socks will make their way back to the basket real soon. Then, place the basket on the other side. Now when I say go, players will grab a sock, go through the pile, and find the matching one. You'll roll the socks together in the shape of a ball, or like an Easter egg, and then toss them, just like that, across the room into the laundry or Easter basket. Now the player with the most socks or eggs in the basket at the end of the timer wins. If you don't have scorekeepers to help you count, you have to keep up with that number on your own. So that means everybody's on the honor system, all right? Parents, I'm looking at you. Okay, now if you need to, press pause now and get everything and everyone in position for the game. I'll wait here. Everybody ready? Great. We're putting a countdown timer on the screen right now, and this Easter egg throwdown is happening in three, two, one, go.
All right, families, come back over here. Come on back. Who won? Okay, that, that was wild. And whoever won gets socks. Okay, just kidding. But adults, make sure whoever won the challenge gets a special treat today. Now, I hope you're having fun so far. We're celebrating because today is Easter. And if you don't know the whole story of Easter, that's okay. Today we'll talk about what makes today, maybe more than any other day, a happy day. But before we get there, I know you have a lot of family and friends who would love to hear from you. And to make that happen, you have a few options. Pause this video and pick one of the challenges on the screen to wish your peeps a happy Easter. <laughs> okay, so I just got like nine texts from my crew saying happy Easter. Thanks fam, real nice. Now even though we're celebrating a little differently than we have in past years, that's okay. Easter is still happy. And that's not just because of peep wars or Easter baskets or chocolate bunnies, although those things are awesome. It's still happy because of what happened thousands of years ago at the first Easter. It's the world's most powerful story and yet it's so simple. So simple that it can be told with laundry. In the beginning, God created everything. He formed people in his very own image. But then we turned away from God. Sin entered the world like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that he made a plan to rescue us. At just the right moment, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts and minds and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving, but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him. But a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, it is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, surely he was the son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them, but now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days, but early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. 
the tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's Son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return so we can live with him forever. I hear that story every Easter and it always amazes me. I mean, God sent Jesus to the world to remind me that he is greater than anything that can go wrong in my world. The simple fact that Jesus came back to life is proof to me that I can face anything bad that happens. I like to think about it this way. I can because Jesus is alive. I can keep loving because Jesus is alive. I can be brave because Jesus is alive. I can have hope because Jesus is alive. Here's an idea. Take a few minutes and add to this list of things you can do because Jesus is alive. Answer this question as a family. How would you fill in the blank, I can because Jesus is alive? Pause the video while you discuss. And when you're finished, meet me back here. Awesome. I love conversations like these because remembering what God has done in the past helps me to trust Him with what's going on in my life right now. And I hope that's true for you too. And I hope you spend the rest of the day making happy memories with your family. To get you started, here's one last challenge. Now for this one, you'll need to decide who is the technology genius at your house. Maybe it's a step parent or an aunt or maybe an eighth grader. Either way, decide who that person is now. Got it? Awesome. Now as soon as this video is over, I want you to go outside and take a family Easter photo. You can be dressed up or you can be in your PJs. It can be totally normal with smiling faces or silly with one of those filters that turns your face into a bunny rabbit. No matter how you do it, take a family photo and make it awesome. Then share it to social media. Remember to use the hashtag EasterJam2020 so we can see your family's Easter style. Maybe now more than ever, this is a time to celebrate and remember God's faithfulness and the hope he gives us in Jesus. After all, that's what makes Easter so happy. Celebrate 